First, I, I've got a question, and I'm not sure if I should address it to the lady from Tom Warner or to our, our friend from the Governor's Association, but do, do you, is there any federal law on taxation of cable television services, or is that strictly up to the states? The states. Strictly. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, I'm, and I'm a sponsor of the, of the bill that says there should be a permanent uh, moratorium. I agree with Congresswoman Lofgren. Uh, I think that ac access to communications and speech should not be taxed. Uh, and I just wonder why, and it's probably difficult politically, but why the federal government uh, hasn't had some limitation on the state and localities ability to tax cable television, at least at the basic service rate. Has that, to the best of your knowledge, ever never come up? What would you think about that? Don't, what, what would be the, what's the difference in the Internet and cable TV basic service as far as the right of people to be able to get ideas and to have access to, to certain news and information? I, I would agree with your theory, and I would say that m some states do not tax basic service cable for that reason, and it's been a state decision. Um, it has not been something that's been federally preempted at this at this time. And I know that Mr. Mr. Quam is. You, is there any tax at all that the governors don't like? <laughs> <laughs> Congressman, the, um, raising taxes is just as difficult on governors as it is on congressmen, and so I, I would uh, disagree with your assessment that somehow governors like all taxes. I think the key part here is that state and local revenue systems need to be designed and, and operated by state and local officials, not by the federal government. And I understand and appreciate that position, and many times I'm a state's rights person and thinking it, you know, you get better response on the local level, but most, and I was a state senator for 24 years, I was a progressive one, however. Most governors and legislators like the most regressive tax, because it's the easiest thing is to tax the people, don't tax me, don't tax, the, ta tax that guy behind that tree. That's their philosophy. And so if the federal government can put some progressivity into the tax structure and say, we think that people should have an access to information, which the internet is, it's the worldwide internet, it's not New Mexico's or Tennessee's or, you know, Los Angeles's, it's the worldwide internet. Uh, I would think that we ought to go further and, and look at prohibiting the states and localities from taxing basic cable, because that's really today, you, you, we, we didn't tax when you plugged in your TV and you watched Chet and David, we didn't tax that, but now you've got it coming through the cable and the states benefit in a regressive way so that the people on the lower income levels have to pay, you know, this regressive tax. Doesn't seem fair, does it, Mr. Quam? That authority has got to remain with the local, state and local officials. If, if the citizens don't like the tax that they apply, that are, is applied by state and local officials, then there are elections for that. And I've had governors say, uh, before, the most important thing in them running their states is really for the federal government, especially in revenue systems, to stay out of the way, and they can do the right thing. Um, your characterization may be accurate from, from, where, from your experience, however, I think a lot of governors would disagree, and that uh, state and local officials really are interested in doing the right thing. In a uh, hearing before Congressman Cannon just last year, we talked about what is the most important thing that's you know, states could do or that the federal government could do with regard to communications taxes in general. And my answer at that time is the same as it is today, and it is don't impede the state's ability to modernize their own tax systems. If Congress steps in and interferes, that actually hinders the ability of state and local governments to do, to make other choices and to modernize um, some of the tax systems that are old. But if you were progressive, as I am, and you had a ban on basic cable television service, that would force the governors and the legislatures, many of whom are wonderful people and good progressives and, and even good non-progressive regressives, so to speak, uh, that they, they would uh, then be forced to have a, a more humane and, and progressive tax system because they, this easy one would be taken away from them. I think you'd also have a very serious problem, especially at the local level where a lot of those taxes, and this goes to the principle of do no harm. When Congress acts, uh, you know, with its pen on, under the Commerce Clause authority, there are real consequences at the state and local level, and in particular because cable franchise fees are more a local issue than anything else, 
uh, though that's starting to change in some states, you're talking a significant tax base that goes to fund some of the basic services of government. So running those governments into a cliff and saying, well, we're going to take that one away from you, actually hurts the, the basic services of government. That's why those decisions must remain at the state and local level. Thank the you. The time as, of the gentleman has expired. As I've learned, when the time expires, I yield back the remainder of my time. Uh, thank you for <laughs> the remainder of your time. And of course,